Hello, everybody. How are you doing? It is Crystal Ann Compton, and I am so stoked to be here today. And I am hoping that you are having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. Before we get into today's video, I want to just ask you, please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you're not subscribed, you got to subscribe because all of those things help me to continue to do the work that I do here for us, for our community, and for you. It really does help. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. Now, in today's video, I am having a conversation with my friend, Brian Fisher, and I'm releasing it a little early, actually. This is our metaphysical corner. This is the segment in our Spirit Pop podcast where we discuss the things that we're thinking about spiritually. And because today is Valentine's Day, we wanted to talk about soulmates. What is the deal with soulmates? Are they real? What about twin flames? And what is a soul group? We get into that and so much more. Now, if you're not subscribed to the Spirit Pop podcast, you ought to be. Just check for us on any platform and follow, subscribe, like, and comment. We also have a Spirit Pop YouTube channel and a YouTube clip channels. I'll drop those links in the description. If you're interested in this content, follow us there. And last but not least, I just want to remind you that I have a text community. If you want to stay connected to me and what I am doing and what I am thinking, where I am going because things are shifting and changing. And if you want to be the first to hear all of the things, then join my text community. There we go. This is the text community. Sorry, it's all turned around. Join the text community because that is how I stay the most deeply connected with the people who want to hear from me. And I would love to connect with you there. Okay, enough about me. Let's get into today's metaphysical corner and happy Valentine's Day. I love you. Do you know what time it is? I'm sus I'm intuiting that it's a special time. What, what time is it? It is our it is our special time. It is time for metaphysical corner. 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 Oh yes. It's it's time <laughs> I mean, for that. Yeah, I mean, okay. So Crystal, are you ready for what we're going to talk about today? I sure well, am. I'm ready to because go. Because the podcast is coming out on St. Valentine's Day of all days. So oh. how about we talk about soulmates, soul groups, okay. and twin flames? Oh, I love it. I love it. Well, do you, have you met a soulmate in your life? Do you, have you found your soulmate? Is it me? It is. It is. It is, <laughs> it is me. I thought it so. You. It's, yeah, we're soulmates. Well, I feel that you don't just have one, and I believe that mm. they can encompass different relationships. I, I feel very strongly that my mother was one of my soulmates or so maybe soul group may, maybe because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's just not one person but I, I feel incredibly connected to my mother and and incredibly connected to you so but yet those aren't romantic relationships but they're but they're to me just as strong if not stronger so I feel like like you don't just get a soulmate because there are people that I know that fell in love and got married, had a beautiful relationship. They either got divorced or a spouse died. And many years later, they found someone else who, you know, they, they just connect with and, and they have a wonderful relationship and they found it again. So I just don't believe there's one. I, I just, I, I find Correct. that very hard to believe, um, especially with, with our heart ball and, and that just all that energy, that love energy, it, it just can't be just one and done or, or Correct. some people that don't find it their whole lives. And then they're like 60 or 70 and bam, do you know what I mean? So, so I feel yeah. like, you know, there, there's a lot of room for that. I don't believe there's just one. And, and I know you, we'll talk about twin flames, but I don't necessarily buy that, but okay. Me I mean, I do believe there are people that you are, you and I are, are so connected. Mm -hmm. I guess mm -hmm. one could say maybe we're twin flames in a way, because, you know, I mm -hmm. think one of the rules of thumb is when you meet a twin flame, it's like beating yourself, but I just, uh, mm -hmm. I just want to vomit. <laughs> but, but I, I do feel that when you are super connected with people that, that, yeah, you have differences of opinions and ideas, but you are just so there. I mean, I guess you could call that like a twin flame, but I don't like that. I don't believe it. I, I don't, I just don't buy it. But Well, I think when you get down into the, the mythology and the lore of a twin flame, what it is supposed to be is a split apart situation. Like there's one soul that was created by the creator. And then at some point that one soul split apart and it is the goal of 
both halves to find each other in every incarnation and iteration. And when you find each other, it's such a magnetic draw. And like you said, you recognize the same soul DNA in the other person. And there's a lot of similarities. And it's a very psychic experience. And I really think this is people creating romantic theology, new age theology. That's a Hallmark that is movie. Not, That's all that is. It's, it's a Hallmark it's movie. It's the notebook. <laughs> it is, it's, it not, is. it's like what it's like what we would like to create for ourselves. And I think oh, we do that a lot as people. We like to create these systems based on what it is that we desire, but it doesn't necessarily make them real. So twin flames, I agree. I do not believe in that. I don't, I do believe in resonance though, like, like vibing with yes. someone and there are degrees to that. And I, I also agree that you have many soulmates. You don't just have one soulmate that you're looking for all your life. And that's got to be lonely if you're not with you presently with your soulmate, which tends to be your romantic person, the person that's your lover. Like, well, what's happening when you're not with that person? That's got to be pretty isolating. I don't believe that. I believe your soulmate is somebody who's from your inner circle of your soul group. And like you said, you can have soulmates that are your parents. You can have soulmates that are your children, that are your lovers, that are your friends, that are your teachers. All these and people have... I was just going to say that. Yeah. I think you can have soulmate Absolutely. pets. Absolutely. Well, they're, well, pets are a whole. It's a whole other. Pets are a whole different metaphysical matter because I did a bit of channeling some years ago about pets, and what spirit showed me was that our pets are actually part of our soul complex, our oversoul complex, our higher self. They're us, yeah. and it's like my finger is me, but it's not all of me. It's just a part of me and it's doing something for me and it's allowing me to have an experience. Our pets similarly come from our soul oversoul, our soul complex. And this is why it's so common to have one pet pass and then another pet come in five years later who has a lot of the same attributes and a lot of the same similarities. Even if the one that passed was a dog and the one that comes in is a cat, they're still very similar in nature because it's the same pet it's still you coming in animal form but i'm getting so yeah i think they can be not just soul mates i think they can be soul parts okay, okay. that's deep yeah that is very deep absolutely but soul soul mates are just people that we have a profound connection with and that takes us into soul groups which is such an interesting conversation because edgar casey talked about soul groups and he said that these are the people and I'm paraphrasing the hell out of it, but these are the people that you tend to incarnate with life after life after life. But the way I sense it to be is that there are degrees to this. So soulmates are the ones that are in your inner sanctum. These are the people we are always incarnating together. We are always finding each other. And when we find each other, it's like we see each other. So, like absolutely. We understand there's a vibe there. There's a resonance there. And we feel it uh, almost immediately. And, but the interesting thing about the people in that inner sanctum of your soul group is that they can incarnate as your antagonist or your abuser. I have heard like, that. Yes. These people are also somewhat your soulmates. These are your soul tribe. And it's actually, when you look at it that way, and I look at my father this way, like he actually agreed as a soul to play the role of an abusive POS to the family and to me. But from an enlightened place, did he agree to do that in a human incarnation? So as to teach me, who's gone on to become a teacher, all the lessons that I needed to learn. And then as soon as he did, he checked out. He died at 52. He's like, peace out. Okay, bye-bye. You know, like he's gone. And I would consider my father, who was the primary antagonist of my life, I would consider him to be a soulmate. And I'm also, I've done enough work with my shadow to be like, grateful. Thanks, dad. Even though you were an, an incorrigible drunk. Thank you, because I'm the person yeah. that I am. Because and you it. learned a lot so of lessons, a, and and to sacrifice soulmate. on a spiritual level before you come mm -hmm. into to the the human existence here, to make that sacrifice to know that you're not going to be liked or loved in that way, is is mm -hmm. that's just to me one of the ultimate sacrifices that someone could make. I think it would be really cool if more of us could get to that meta perspective with our traumatizers or the ones who've neglected and abused us and see it from a soul perspective because it really does help you to heal in your human life when you see it from the vantage point of well that soul that soul is here to teach me something and through and pain is the greatest teacher they say right i think joy is a pretty good yeah. teacher too so yeah. is love but i mean pain is a great Absolutely. teacher and so the souls that come in to teach us at that level 
I think are soulmates. But so then you get out of your inner sanctum, like maybe the five to 10 people that you incarnate with every single time. Then you get to a somewhat of an outer ring. And these are the people that tend to bop into an incarnation with you every three lives or two lives or every other life or so. But nonetheless, it's a meaningful interaction, but they tend to not really stay very long in your life. They kind of come in with a lot of energy and maybe you create something together or maybe you come to a realization as a result, but then they cycle on out and go on their way. And that's happened a lot to me in my life. Have you ever met someone who just changed you so profoundly and poof, yeah, then they absolutely. left? Absolutely. And yeah, so, so, you know, I think, oh, that's a great lesson. I learned a lot from them and, you know, you wish everybody well and, you know, wherever you go. But yeah, I think some people just zip in to teach you a lesson that you need at that particular time in your life and mm -hmm. you learn it and you move on and it's like, oh, they're gone. But, but wow, you think back, what a profound message or lesson that you got from them at that time. Correct. And they can also be people in that outer ring. And then there's an, even an outer ring beyond that. But like, we don't have to get all crazy. Um, they also sometimes just come in to impart something that you need in your life right now. Like a bit of information, an experience, a condition, a bit of money, whatever. Like they've just come in to facilitate a part of your process. And then they, and you don't even necessarily regard them as a special person. Although if you were to get still and go inward, you could probably feel them as a very special person. That person is a kind of soulmate, but it's probably more accurate to say that they're in your soul group. But yeah, I think you can have many, many soulmates. And I think that we I do. I agree. I agree. Well, on this Valentine's Day, don't get caught up in the corporate America of it all. Yeah. Let's go out and spend a whole lot of money getting candy and cards and roses and go to fancy dinners. It just, I yeah. don't like Valentine's no, Day. Do you? Not a big fan. No. Why don't you like it? Because it's just dumb. It's just dumb. You should you oh. should love the people that you love all day, every day, and you don't need a special day to remember them or acknowledge them. You acknowledge them every day. Well, what about a birthday, though? Well, birthdays I are mean, different I, because I feel like that's the that day that you came onto this earth, right, in this incarnation. So, yeah, that's worth celebrating. Correct. And I think Valentine's can kind of be sad for people who don't have someone on Valentine's, don't have a romantic other, like everybody else is out here partying. You know, yeah. ooh, I'm in love. And then here, you know, somebody else is just sitting at home watching Bridgerton. Yeah. Or the Gilded wishing. Age, because I'm loving the Gilded Age, but that's... Oh Are you God. loving I didn't think I would like it because I'm so sci-fi horror, but there's something yeah. I really enjoy about it. I just, I don't know what it is yet. And you saw Elizabeth, of course, yes. right? Yes. Okay. I've just, I, I don't know why. I just had to ask and make sure yeah. that you saw that because yeah. it was fantastic. But, but yeah... But, you know, so there's some people who are in love right now and some people are not. It doesn't matter. I think you got to start with loving yourself. Can you 100%. dig it? you got to be able to be with yourself. Like, look, I have been, I have never, have I ever had a Valentine's, let me ask myself this very serious question. Have I ever had a Valentine's Day without a significant other? And I don't think I, I mean, at the, after 18, when I first got married, I don't think I've ever not been with somebody. Isn't that crazy? That's or so, wild. Like, I know, but at the same time, I feel like I've gone through a lot of self-development, but there has always been a penis on the periphery for me. <laughs> penis on There's the periphery. Penis on the Hashtag periphery. penis on the periphery. <laughs> <laughs> I've always, but I mean, I can't help it. <laughs> well, because you are the penis magnet. All I mean, the penises. Your milkshake if you brings look at all the, the penises to the If yard. you look at it statistically, it's true. <laughs> But everybody has a, a one special person that they came in here. Well, at, I think it's more than one, but at least one. Everybody has at least one special person that they are going to be super resonant with and spend some quality time with in their life. But like, be open to the idea that there are many, many, many other many, players many. on the stage. And you were just Absolutely. one. Absolutely. It's fantastic. Have fun. Yeah, have fun and enjoy it. And um, love yourself. That's the best Valentine you could ever give yourself, loving yourself. Not like that. Well, maybe you want to. <laughs> Unless you, Unless want, you to. want to. We don't judge. <laughs> Unless you we want to. We are not judging. I do not judge. No, <laughs> sir. <laughs> <laughs>